Hello, hello, and welcome, welcome once again to the Secrets of the High Demand Coach podcast. And I'm here with yet another high demand coach, and that is Stephen Turner. Stephen is the president of Flow Business Solutions. He's a business coach and employee leadership expert and a product broker specialist. He, What he does, he leverages the experience, wisdom, and tools that he gained during his 35-year career with UPS, where he provided leadership in the diverse environments of operations, finance and accounting, and technology at district, regional, and corporate levels, including five years overseas in Europe. And now what he does, he helps others lead their employees as opposed to managing them. Well, Stephen, I've seen this on the calendar for a while now, and I'm so excited that that our day has finally come. You're here. Uh, Thanks for being on the show. I was wondering if you could, for our audience, just start with a little bit about what you were doing before you got into coaching and consulting and, uh, and why you ultimately decided to make the leap. All right, great. First of all, I'm glad to be here. So thanks for inviting me. Um, As you mentioned, uh, I started my business career at UPS. And uh, I've got an interesting start because uh, I was only 20 years old when I started in the management team at UPS. And uh, I could talk more deeply into that. But uh, from there, uh, 35 years covering the uh, areas that you mentioned. Uh, I learned some very valuable things when I spent five years in Europe during uh, UPS's international initial international expansion. Uh, I then went into uh, a round of coaching. Then I was working with a startup for a while, and uh, that did not get off the ground timely enough for me, though it is off the ground by now. Uh, we have an entrepreneurial world going here. Uh, my wife has an online legging store. We then connected our coaching business to that to help support the people that get involved in it. And uh, I branched out into full-blown coaching in 2019 to really leverage the information that um, I was given uh, by the Lord, to be honest with you, throughout my career at UPS. And that in and of itself is an interesting story. So uh, right now we help small business leaders. Uh, solve issues and get prepared to scale their business. And that can look lots of different ways, but usually it comes down to the people Hmm. and how leaders prepare themselves for that next phase of life, which can be lost in the shuffle because, you know, they're in it on a day-to-day basis. So that's what we do. And I love working with clients because um, I usually get I usually get a chance to dig deeper than what I was originally hired for, which I liked, which I enjoy doing. So that's awesome. Uh, so I, I'd actually like to dig into that a little bit um, because, uh, again, in in our work, I've found that that's true. Um, what do folks tend to come to you for versus what you would say is some of the most important uh, results that they receive? Well, some come to me because they. Um, they, they struggle moving from being an entre- a solopreneur into an entrepreneur, and they have a problem with delegation, or they have a problem with um, how to lead employees, or uh, they start to lead employees, they stumble, get discouraged, all of a sudden they you know, relieve themselves of all their employees, and now they are a solopreneur again without a way to get into this you know, next season of life when they would like to be able to sit on the beach and get paid for being there. So those are the usually, now I've, I've got one today that that has a really um, personal desire to grow his business for the purpose of generating funds to support church. So we're having a great time um, moving that forward as well. So there's uh, lots of different reasons. Most of them come back to people ultimately. Because hmm. it is people that uh, produce results. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I couldn't agree more. Now, uh, you, you, before the call, you mentioned you're working in a number of different spaces and environments. What would you say is some of either the most exciting or the most important work that you're doing right now with clients? Well, I love seeing uh, faces, on, smiles on people's faces when uh, new things happen and they get a, um, a new accomplishment comes along. Uh, when I get involved in the corporate side of life, which we are moving into that area from the corporate side, uh, from the the small, medium-sized business back into corporate life, I just love it there. Um, I was so blessed to work at UPS, and UPS had uh, 
I don't know if the, I don't know if it's a policy by design, but it certainly appeared by default. And that is, if you did well, you were left alone. And uh, I was left alone for 34 years, for the most part. That doesn't mean I didn't report to somebody. But as far as developing my leadership style, I had the freedom to be able to develop it. And I'm very grateful that I got to uh, grow up in the business world at UPS. Great, solid organization. But I was able to you know, do things that I thought were the right things to do. And uh, they all turned out pretty well. That's awesome. I'm looking forward to getting back into that environment because I feel very comfortable there. Yeah. And how would you uh, how would you kind of differentiate those two worlds? There's obvious things like size and revenue and things like that. But what's different about the challenges that are being faced in the corporate world right now versus those in small and medium enterprises? Uh, let me answer that question this way. And this is uh, a topic or a thought that not that many people think of. But when you take every large business, including UPS, who now has probably about 500,000 employees globally, they started as a small business, the corner of 2nd Main Street in Seattle, Washington, with four people. So when a business gets started and you've got solopreneur or partnership or whatever, and you get started, everybody works closely together. And as they grow the business, they need to hire employees. They're the ones doing the hiring, and they're still working with them like this, right? Well, as a business starts to grow and you get to the point where the, the entrepreneur or business leader needs to back out and do the work they really should be doing and turn over the day-to-day -day work to other people, they hire people to do that. That's all good. Well, when you get to the point if you got like six or seven of those um, new employees, sooner or later, one of those people is going to be identified as the manager of the group so they oversee the day-to-day -day operation so the entrepreneur can step back and do the stuff that the he or she needs to do. Well, if you take that situation and you continue to grow a business and you add another layer of management, one of the things that happens is the business owner, business leader is no longer doing the hiring. Now, we all know, I know personally, and I'm sure you know, that when you hire somebody, you nurture them you feel like they're yours, right? And if business leaders do it right, they train them very well, take care of the things that employees like to be uh, taken care of, like well-trained, appreciated, and those good things. There's five things actually in that bucket of appreciation. But anyway, as the business grows and, the, and somebody else is doing the hiring, the same bond that exists between an owner and an employee is not the same as a manager and employee. It just isn't, right? So the business owner, and this is where it falls down, the business owner doesn't think about the fact that that situation exists and they don't train the manager to really hire and then nurture the employees. Yes, they're trained to you know train them, but as far as nurturing to help employees develop as individuals and accomplish their goals, uh, that gets dropped along the way. Now, let's take this into as... As an organization continues to scale, another layer of management is added. Pretty soon you get into the corporation scenario. This same issue has existed for this entire time this organization is growing. Now, we know that business leaders need to keep track of numbers, right? They need to attain results because that's why they're in business in the first place. But one of the places it breaks down is the fact that we have a tendency uh, to forget it's people that actually generate the results. Mm. So to take this to the nth degree, when you've got an organization that's sizable, let's say a thousand employees or better, you've got a number of layers of management here. Person on the top, the CEO, is still looking at numbers and they're still making their statements and they're still doing their business planning and whatever, which of course they're going to do. But the message that comes down from the top and flows through the ranks is a number message. And that number message falls on the shoulders of the frontline supervisor who has one of the hardest jobs in an organization because they have to take that message, convert it to a message that the employees understand, they get inspired, so they do the work that needs to be done. That piece is missing mm. because that frontline supervisor is also relaying numbers. So this, to me, is one of the biggest issues we have in organizations. Now, 
that is a situation that has existed for a long time 120 years believe it or not because in 1895 there was a gentleman um frederick winslow winslow taylor who at that time was identified as the business's first industrial engineer and he was really good at what he did and he transformed the process of running a business into being a number exercise mm. which okay to watch the numbers um, ups is tremendously successful because of the industrial engineering department that it has however we must always remember it's still people that do the work the process of focusing on numbers caused not intentionally but it did happen where uh, attention to the employee as an individual um was waning it had had actually been waning for the last uh, probably 50 years mm. that's, what called, that's what created uh, labor unions in the 1860s because people want to have an impact on their life they want to have something that says i want to do this and i'm in some control of it so labor unions propped up to try to fill that gap well to continue quickly the the leadership mentality that has existed from 1895 straight through to right now has been pretty much the same and each generation replicates itself so it's not like the business leaders and corporation uh, management people ceos are doing something intentionally wrong it's just that we've dropped the ball on this point and um I again going back to UPS and my 34 years in the management team uh, because I had the chance to do my own thing and I had an interesting thing happen because I was only 20 years old when I started that means the people that I report that reported to me which were mainly college students at that time because we were doing the internal package handling in the in the UPS were almost all older than I was when you're in your 30s 40s 50s nobody cares who's whatever age but when you're 22 years old nobody wants a 20 year old telling him what to do okay I had to get I had to deal with that nobody brought it to my attention but I, I imagined that it was going to be there so what I did was I thought to myself how would I how am I going to do this so that I avoid that stigma and I decided that I would simply do this I would treat people the way I'd like to be treated mm -hmm. and it worked on day one and it worked for 34 years thereafter and it still works so I got my start and the leadership style that I developed could come largely from the fact that that's where I started and I had to lead people the way they wanted to be treated and I just I've just kept it going it's uh it's a powerful approach because it empowers people buzzword from the early 80s and um people work as a team you just get I could talk about this for a long time but it's still you know leading people so that they develop as individuals as well as successful employees for the organization yeah so at this point kind of the conversation we're really dialed in on these are are relatively large organizations right that well relatively successful probably even yeah. tremendously accessible if you look at it statistically speaking yep. they're doing a lot of things right yeah. so yes, absolutely uh oh, yeah. how do you how do you help them see um you, you know how, how do you help them accept that they could be doing something wrong when so many things are going right yeah um we've had we just came through the pandemic season and coming out of it we had the great resignation and it's probably tapered off a little bit by right now but over 45 million people left corporate jobs when people were called to come back to work now as much as the the issue has existed for a long time that I'm going to talk about now but let me give you the picture of it uh, in 1990 Gallup started to produce a number and the number was that 85 percent of employees are not fully engaged in their work and that number hasn't changed in 32 years so there's an issue there and unfortunately when employees are not fully engaged 
they tend to they tend to back off they start falling into the i'm here for a paycheck uh, approach and you just don't get the fired up people that can do so much better for you so the pandemic brought this to the surface because these people didn't want to come back to what they didn't like okay now what now we've got a couple of situations going here um we are at 3.4 percent unemployment right now four percent is considered full employment that basically says businesses are running out of people so if you want to a number of corporations and this is you know in print so i'm not making this up um are having a hard time getting enough people in so they can continue their business model and continue their current success what happens when it comes time to needing more employees to grow further right now we can come back there's an answer for this the answer is employee turnover and there's two pieces of that puzzle one i just talked about it's the fact that if you're running out of employees it would be good that you don't turn them over as often right but there's also the cost factor when you consider that and this is an av average for the U.S. and any uh, CEO can take the information and tweak it for their scenario. But the average salary in the United States is about fifty-four thousand dollars. The average uh, turnover rate is nine point seven percent. The average amount of time it takes of additional spending to replace an employee is equal to about seven and a half months of salary. So, you take those numbers. And if you look at an organization of a thousand people who need to replace 97 people every year, the cost of that, based on the averages only, it's $3.2 million. It's, it's amazing. It's an amazing number, and it's every year. So, given the fact that we're going to be, we're, there just aren't enough employees out there right now at 3.4% unemployment. Where are they? You know, they're, some people have chosen to work from home. So that's one of the reasons they're not there. But anyway, so if organization, and one of the reasons that people leave organizations is they leave the manager. So getting back to one of the topics, the meant, things you mentioned at the very beginning, where it's just much more successful to lead employees rather than managing them. If you manage them, they resist. Mm -hmm. But if you lead them, where they want to follow you they will follow and now you've got the development of a team and the the challenging point of discussing this topic is um it's easy to blame people for the situation that we're in and it's really not a blame situation because generation after generation after generation of leadership team has just kept rolling um ceos are smart people and they know if there's an issue in the organization, they know what it is. And most of them want to solve the problem. So if a CEO has an issue with not having enough people, um, it can be fixed by changing the leadership style where people do not want to leave the manager that they're leaving today. Yeah. And, you know, there's a, a proven process to do it. It is based on. Uh, my experience, as well as the CEO of the corporate group that we just started. So we work very close together, and we we have put together a solution to this that I know works because I I lived it for, it's over 45 years now that I've been doing this. So that's a long answer to your question, but um, there it's it's recognizing an issue which, you know, CEOs have their job because they have the ability to recognize issues, and then knowing that this solution is available and it works and it's successful yeah yeah uh it, it's i mean there's just so many remarkable things in there and i think you really brought it all home with that statement if you if you manage people they'll resist if you lead them they'll follow there's it's yeah. just uh there's there's so much that can be resolved the the simplicity of that phrase almost uh almost you know seems like it diminishes its strength but it's, it's the exact opposite yeah. so uh, i've got this question i like to ask it of all my guests and, and that is what's the biggest secret that you wish wasn't a secret at all what's that one thing that you wish everybody listening today knew 
Well, the biggest secret I think I've kind of been alluring to here, alluding to, and that's uh, and let me explain it from my hist- my experience. When I went to Europe for five years, I had the pleasure of working in ten different countries while I was over there. I had mm-hmm. responsibilities in ten countries, and I had the Nordic countries: Spain, Norway, uh, Finland, Sweden, down through Austria, Belgium, the Netherlands, Greece, and Turkey, and Ireland over there. I discovered something, and that is that cultures vary, but hearts do not. Wow. People still, they have in their heart, they want to do good work. They want to be compensated correctly. They want to be well-trained so that they're capable and so trained that they know they feel that they can do more in the future because that's comforting to them, plus appreciating for who they are. This is global. and. I think that's that's a secret. Yeah. Because it's not it's I can just say that based on my coming up through UPS which is a great organization never discussed. That's a secret. People want to do good work and they're the same all over from that in that perspective. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's so refreshing to hear because a lot of what comes especially from both the entrepreneurial world and and from leadership and management is the frustrations of dealing with people, right? It's the, uh, and, and oftentimes the word employee almost carries, carries a negative connotation now. You know, people have abandoned it for team members and we, we try and do all these things to work around it. But the reality of it is, uh, I think as managers, we need to take a look inside first and say, how do we see these people, right? Do we what what expectations are we putting on them before they've even said a word? And uh, again, it's just so refreshing to hear that vantage point and it coming from a real experience, right? It's some, not something you read in a book. This is no, no, I didn't make what it you lived out for no. years and years. So uh, I love that. Uh, I appreciate it. It's such an important point. Um, another question for you, though, is uh, I'm actually going to have you take off your coach hat for a second, consultant hat, uh, and I'm going to have you put on your uh, your COO hat, uh, you're, you're starting off on this new venture. And tell us a little bit about, uh, if you would get in the ring with us, that's what I'm going for. So, yeah. you know, jump down at ground level and talk to us a little bit about what the next phase of growth looks like for you and your organization and what challenges you'll have to overcome to get there. Okay. Our, right now, the focus, and this is 100% as far as I'm concerned, getting into corporate America and helping to solve this issue Because when it is resolved, it benefits thousands and Mm -hmm. thousands and literally millions of people because of the reach that corporations have. I mean, can you just imagine if I went back to UPS or any organization, it could be anybody, where you have a conversation with the folks at the top, because this is a top-down issue, right? You can't come in at the side and expect the whole organization to change. It's a top-level leadership uh, issue to sit down and just talk about what the challenges are to a given ceo and they vary right we're not running in there and saying hi you have this issue we like to go in and just we talk about what we do and hopefully it falls on the ears of people that hmm maybe i should talk about this but really going in to find out You know, what is on the hearts and the minds of CEOs and where in that mix can we help? And so I, I, it's hard to, to get in the front door of a CEO's organization. I I know that. So the biggest challenge I have and that we have in our group is to be able to get the message out and have it fall on the ears of those people that need to hear the message. Because yeah. not everybody needs it, but there are many that need it. Yeah. So that's yeah. the, uh, I think that's the biggest challenge. Once we're in the door and once we're, we have the team going and the organization wants to move in this direction, the rest is not a problem for me. That's awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Uh, now, before I let you go, I know there's you know, folks from you know, from the small and medium enterprise are like, yes, like we're we have that hiring thing. It's happening right now. Like, what do we do about it? And and then you've got some folks uh, listening from the corporate world saying, like, he's this guy gets it. So, for someone who wants to learn more about what it is that you do, how can they uh, reach out to you? How can they find out more? They can uh, call me. 
My phone number is uh, 267-753-5568. That will bring us into our organization. Uh, if you go to our website, which is www.flow business hyphen solution singular.com there's a contact form in there if somebody would like to get together and have a chat more than happy to do that uh we also have a free video that's available it's the top link of the website that if somebody wanted to get a picture and an idea of what we do the video will do that and they want to reach out after that that's that'd be great but we're here to help people and uh there's there are millions to help Tremendous. Well, Stephen, thank you so much again for those listening. Flow dash business dash solution singular dot com. Yeah. Uh, head on over there. I had a chance to browse around it today. There's just a, a wealth of resource available. I would strongly recommend it. And Stephen, thank you so much for being on the show. It's just an absolute pleasure having you here. And Thank for you. those for yes, and for those listening, your time and attention mean the world to us. It was an honor to be able to get to share this with you. I hope you got as much out of this conversation as I did, and I cannot wait to see you next time. Take care.